good morning welcome to the lesson proof reading let us get to know the objectives of this uh, lesson and the things like copy holder the proof reader what are the styles of publications that is house style work style and what are the copies for corruption corrections a soft copy digital copy and press copy and what is the importance of proofreading in the publications because you are dealing with corporate publications any publication that is being prepared and published by corporate organizations are called corporate publications and a public relations man is supposed to get himself involved in fact it is the responsibility of the pro or pr manager or corporate communications manager to edit and produce publications that the corporation or the corporate organization or whatever is the organization for which he is working for will have to carry out it is his responsibility now <clears throat> look at the objectives of this lesson what if why you should understand very carefully the objectives are that it will explain about a copy holder and the proof reader importantly the other things are there you know author is there editor is there printer is there they are all involved in process of printing but now as far as this lesson is concerned we are talking about proof reading and important people in the process of proof reading are the copy holder and the proof reader and you will have to familiarize with the proof reading marks there are two types of marks marks on the margin and marks in the text so whatever mark you make in the text in the running text the correspondingly there will be another mark in the margin of the print or copy whatever it is and what is the importance of proof reading in all publications because the very the very name itself suggests that proof reading means that the proof is read so that no mistakes or uh, uh, no mistakes take place in the final output and in this lesson as i told you you will be you uh, uh, understanding what is soft copy digital uh, proof and uh, press proof and all these things to come back to the proof reading it is an art of detecting the mistakes on proofs proof is the mm, proof is only a copy before it becomes an output a proof when the typeface when the when something is set earlier we used to have the typefaces and in a frame they are they were uh, set into that is called photo um, uh, type setting and the type setting is uh, attached to a device wherein it gets the ink and that ink is transformed transferred to the paper or roll or whatever it is so this is generally it is the process of printing now we are in the age of digital printing of course even if you are in the age of digital printing the common uh, thing between the uh, regular printing ordinary printing conventional printing and the digital printing is that the proof reading and uh, the the proof reading marks are important because they are common for both the types of uh, printing and all that now proof reading is the art of detecting mistakes on proofs before publication and indicating desired corrections mm -hmm. it includes locating inconsistencies between type and copy the art also consists of exposing errors of all kinds of all types therefore the proof reader must be on the alert constantly for misspelled words errors in grammar poor spacing sometimes no space sometimes more space sometimes double space so it is the duty of the proof reading and the copy holder to correct all these things faulty font selection font is one uniform font is there supposing by mistake one a different font has come 
it looks very ugly therefore uh, uh, the proofreading will detect this faulty font uh, uh, occurrence and it will be replaced wrong dates of uh, for commonly known events supposing you write uh, independence day but you write 16th of august but it is very very common that india got independence on 15th of august if you if you say 16th of august it is a blunder therefore such kind of mistakes the the commonly known events inconsistent compounding and use of abbreviations you know abbreviations are there they are to shorten the the size of the word with limited characters but this kind of abbreviations are necessary where well, supposing for example gracia for example it is i dot e dot e dot e full stop it means i full stop e full stop both are small so this is an abbreviation you cannot put them generally in caps or you cannot put them without full stops or periods full stop is called um, period or dot so incorrect use of quotes and incorrect use of italics and romans in titles improper capitalization of words in headlines so headlines generally the size the, 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 in the in the headlines or in the text common uh, names proper names and certain other important things are put in uh, uh, capitals or the beginning of the sentence or the beginning of the para is always the capital so suppose in the beginning of the sentence or in the beginning of the para if you do not put the capital it doesn't look nice it is not proper therefore improper capitalization is also detected in the headlines wrong word divisions sometimes words are divided uh, divisioned or cut improperly the such thing such things to be detected in the proof reading and too many consecutive lines with words carried over the next line wrong use of figures improper use of uh, uh, homonyms you know what is homonym homonyms are words of similar consonantal structure whereas synonyms you know what is synonym the other word used for the same word that is synon you know what is antonym antonym is quite opposite but we have to be very careful about the homonyms what is homonym words of similar consonantal structure sometimes the same they, they are pronounced in the same manner but uh, the meaning is different for example there are two words one is obsolete and the other one is absolute for example what is obsolete which is not in the use that is called obsolete what is absolute exactly the absolute means exactly but almost the b the characters consonants b is there s is there l is there t is there but a little change of vowels therefore absolute and absolute are not same but they are similar but they have similar consonantal structure these are called homonyms there are several homonyms in english and we have to be very careful while using this and it is a duty of the proofreader and the copy holder to find out all these mistakes so with an eagle's eye a skilled proofreader must be a sort of one man encyclopedia so therefore a proofreader is said to be a one man something like one man army is one man encyclopedia there used to be two people for proofreading one is proofreader and the other one is copy holder now because of the paucity because of the technology because of the and uh, the manpower usage now only one proofreader is being employed therefore he is called one man encyclopedia he is acquainted with all kinds of words all kinds of grammar all kinds of uh, the, the the at least the language uh, the whatever is the uh, language whether it is english or telugu in which he is working he must know instantly the preferred spelling of thousands of words and the names of present and fa- past famous persons as well as the accepted spelling of the prominent countries of the world and their capitals so accepted spellings you cannot write the like india like i and diya it becomes a wrong so what is the there are two things the accepted accepted the words that is accepted letters characters of a name that is one thing and the received pronunciation is one thing what is received pronunciation received pronunciation is uttering a word 
uniformly it is it is uttered in the same manner in almost all countries or majority of the countries it is called rp received pronunciation and the the the, the preferred spelling is called prominent countries uh, you, there is one particular the accepted spelling and you cannot use a different for sri lanka it has to be s r i l a n k a it cannot be s h r i l a n k a for america it can be a m e r i c a but it cannot be it cannot it it cannot be a m e r i k a so these are all the things you are supposed to know because you are a public relations man and you should be acquainted or thorough in the at least the printing uh, the uh, production pre press proof reading knowledge so copy holders role is emphasized and a detailed relationship between the two copy holder and the proof reader the first one is copy holder and below him i think copy holder yeah, uh, 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 is the assistant he assist the proof reader the proof reader should follow copy closely unless he is positive that it contains no error he should go after anything suspicious draw a ring around it draw a ring means a circle while proof reading the, the the proof reader while the copy holder reads or the proof reader reads the other one will observe if there are any problems it will be circled the mistaken word the wrongly spelt word the wrongly typeset word the, it 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 has to be circled and it, uh, it has to be returned to the either to the editor or author for his final decision the proof reader should never assume responsibility for changing so he is not the author he is not the editor he is only the proof reader the whatever the author gives it will be uh, typeset a, a, a copy a print out will come the editor will the before it goes to the after the editor or before the before the editing it will it will go to the proof reader and with the assistance of the copy holder the proof reader will make the corrections only as for as spelling mistakes as for as um, typesetting mistakes are concerned not the content not the intent of the author not the content of the copy in fact he is not allowed to make corrections in the text i mean in the, the intention of the author will change if it is done proof readers marks are illustratively explained along with the meanings of marginal and textual marks as i told you one is marginal marks of proof reading and the other one is in the actual text the first illustration which is given in your textbook uh, says about operational signs and the typographical signs while the second one the second list on the right side of the um, on the same page it indicates the meanings of the symbols along with the example for each the proof reader is bound by a pattern as he goes about his work he is faced with two styles of operation namely the printing styles are two that is house style and work style generally house style is house style is followed and in extraordinary cases work style is followed unless the unless the publisher asks for a particular style generally house journals or newspapers or, or any other publication follows the house style because every newspaper every media house will have a different house style if you look closely at the hindu the indian express the times of india the hans india the south india times whatever is the english newspaper or just imagine whatever is the till there there will be a little difference in the photo Uh, in, in the type faces and the style of the vertical horizontal in the columns though columns are same six columns or eight columns or uh, the the without columns whatever is the style they are called the style book as per the organization as per the publisher but in case they specifically ask to do this kind of printing this kind of uh, format this kind of layout then it is called uh, work style now copy holder so far we discussed about the proof reader now let us discuss about the copy holder who assist the proof reader while doing the proof reading copy holder in printing he is a proof reader's assistant who reads the copy aloud not within himself he will have to read it out aloud or follows it while the proof is read in case the proof reader reads the copy holder will have to observe look for mistakes whether anything is there for the detection of deviations from it in the proof 
copy holder's job is to read or hold copy in connection with its comparison with printed matters in the proof and to do other related works related to the proof reading now typical tasks are that he reads the copy aloud to the proof reader this is the duty of the uh, copy holder he notes the difference between the copy held as the proof reader's proof and checks other items desired by the proof reader files copy and the proof together and what are the knowledge what is the knowledge he is supposed to possess and what are the abilities of the copy holder if you look at it copy holder also is expected to have the knowledge of grammar word usage how the a particular word is used and in what context the word divisions spellings must be very thorough in spellings and the syntax pronunciation and punctuation and proof reading procedures terminology symbols detecting the discrepancies between the proof and the copy his personal characteristics are reliability patience correct pronunciation and normal hearing and vision in some cases this procedure is reversed proof reader reads while the copy holder observes or sometimes copy holder reads the proof reader observes and makes corrections this happens every time proof reader is one that reads the copy or proof in order to find errors as we have already discussed what are the main tasks of the proof reader they are there should not be any errors such as letters in the wrong order the text and the diagrams are positioned correctly sometimes diagrams are placed at one place and the the the, the text related to it will go to the next page or the comment or the uh, or the words describing the chart or the diagram or the table whatever it is it will go to a different place it commonly happens generally happens therefore it is the duty of the proof reader to ensure that the text related the caption related to the uh, either diagram or the box or the visual will have to be closer to the such visual and page numbers are in the right order generally page numbers are made on the top center or on the top right if it is on the bottom bottom center bottom left or bottom right and sometimes when you type the page number is also inserted by the um, the uh, person who types or um, uh, sets the type as colon colon page number and colon colon or hyphen page number hyphen sometimes it goes into the text but better it is made the page numbers are made only at the end after after the uh, after everything is done but in case it is digitally happening these days it is possible that it gets automatically the page number gets adjusted but in uh, those days but even now where the printing the conventional type of printing is still followed it is very difficult to check for the page numbers getting either to the above page or to the next page so it it leads to conf uh, confusion why at all page numbers are required supposing the copy holder and the proof reader are reading and making corrections so if i say that if i am the proof reader and somebody is a copy holder if we say that so and so page love page 11 I, it should be easy for me to go to the 11th page immediately if there are no page numbers then it becomes a difficult for both you then have to uh, check for the the word where it is occurring where it, may, corrections are to be taken care taken out then the document follows the agreed house style or work style it is the duty of the proof reader to ensure whether it is according to the house style general house style or according to the instructions by the the author or the editor in the work style and the chapter titles match the list of contents so there is a pref- there, there is a index page contents page or rather so in the in the in the text in the running text the title of a particular chapter is something but in the index page or the contents page it it is something different then it doesn't match it is the duty of the proof reader and copy holder to ensure that the index the contents the name given in the contents of the uh, index page matches with the the heading or the subheading given in the text 
there are no confusing words there should not be column or page breaks this is the duty of the proofreader to ensure illustrations have the right captions and relate to the text the layout is logical and attractive what is layout if you have if you see any newspaper the size of the newspaper is when it is open it is a double demi when it is closed the first page is a demi it is folded one one fold it is demi half if you fold it again it becomes demi quarto demi quarto means a4 size the general the universal size of printing copying is on the a4 size and i think in one of the lessons you have already come across the sizes of the paper they have been universalized earlier it used to be imperial sizes imperial means british um, uh, measurements now the universal america has brought a o a1 a2 a3 a4 a5 a6 a7 a8 and b o b1 b2 b3 these are all the sizes of the paper have been universalized so that it becomes very easy instead of going in for the size the the height and width the length and width or whatever is something like full scale something like legal size now it is uh, there is no confusion if i say a4 size you will immediately understand if i say a is a8 there, there is no confusion sometimes crown is confused with a8 these are all the sizes of the paper the pro or pr practitioner is supposed to get acquainted with proofreader would mark any changes that are needed using symbols which are internationally recognized the sizes are interna internationally recognized and even proofreading marks and text marks both on the marginal marks or textual marks have been universalized so that it is easy for everybody to understand when once they get acquainted with when working on a computer proofreader may use specialist software to mark up the document he may also produce a separate list of any questions you have for the editor or the writer copy holding or copy reading employs two proofreaders generally but these days only one man is there and he is whole and soul he is both copy holder and also the proofreader he is one man or me one man encyclopedia so experienced copy holders employs various codes and verbal shortcuts that uh, accompany their reading the spoken word digits for example means that the numbers about to be read or aren't words spelled out 55 11 these are the words there should not be any confusion it, it is wherever there is there, there ought to be words the uh, words ought to be replaced uh, with the uh, digits or digits with the what we are we are following the arabic uh, digits that is 1 2 3 4 we are also some for chapters we follow the roman uh, digits that is i two i's three i's uh, five for v and something like i v x l c d m these are all the roman i v x l c d m i stands for 1 v stands for 5 x stands for 10 c for 100 l for uh, something like that these are all uh, uh, roman uh, digits but universally Mm, for even for computers also this arabic uh, digits are followed followed and wherever those digits are to be followed if uh, it is going to lead confusion it is better to write it in words instead of one one better you write e l e v e n if the uh, situation demands in order to avoid confusion and double reading a single proof reader checks a proof in the traditional manner but then passes it on to a second reader who repeats the process both the initial the proof both the people will have to after proof reading they will have to sign it yes in order to uh, tell the people that it has been proofread the first proof reader will read and put it put his signature or initial at the bottom or every page and the second one also does the same thing he follows now as i told you because of the labor costs going up there is no only one proofreader he also does the job of copy holder now you are very uh, clear about the jobs and roles responsibility of a copy holder and the proofreader how it is read now let us go to the proofreaders marks and how they are useful how they are employed how they are recognized how they are carried out 
the use of almost all proofreading gimbals follows the same pattern. There is a mark in the margin, that is marginal mark, you called, along with specific details about the change that should be made, and a mark in the text, that is textual mark. Marginal mark, textual mark. And I think you know uh, this already generally, if a copy is given, a printout is given, if there are marks, if there are uh, mistakes to be corrected, what you do generally is, anybody, so you do something, you draw underline uh, in the text and correspondingly on the left side or the right side, whatever it is, on the margins, you give instructions. So those you write in the margin are called marginal marks, marginal instructions. Those you make symbols in the within the text or the body is called textual marks. Now, proofreading marks, for example, Operational signs, there are two kinds. One is operational signs and typographical signs. Operational signs, suppose for delete, it is a kind of D. And for close up, a bracket above and a bracket below. Delete this space. Delete and close up. It, it means a D will be there and a close up mark will be there above and below. Suppose parentheses. Parentheses are on the left and right side. These marks, if it are, if they are turned like this, they become closer. Stet is another proofreader mark. Stet means let it stand. S T E T. Let it stand. Insert space. Supposing a hash mark is put in the a hash mark is put in the margin, uh, in the margin, and a corresponding textual mark is put there with a uh, caret. Caret means Telugu lo hamsapadam. Hamsapadam is called a caret. If a caret is put in the text and a correspondingly in the margin, some hashtag is put there. Hashtag means two vertical oblique and two horizontal. If it is put there, it must be read as insert space. Similarly, there are several other things. Make space between the words equal. Make space between the lines equal. Insert the hair space, a letter space. Begin a new paragraph. There is another uh, symbol um, mark. Indent type one M. M M means okay space from left or right. Move right. Move left. I think you have uh, come across the the terminology like flush left, flush right in typing. Whoever uh, uh, is typing in uh, generally in the typewriting type uh, in the computers, it is called flush left means every line is flush to the left. If it is flush right, the left side is unequal, and on the right side, everything is common. So first line here, first line here, second line here, third line, fourth line, fifth line, sixth line. So if it is flush to the right, all lines on the left side may be unequal, but on the right side, all the lines are uh, uh, ending at one margin. That is called flush right. And there is another setting called centering. So if there are 10 lines or 20, page, 20 lines in one page, centering means a line will be uh, five characters, another line will be eight characters, another line will be four characters, another line will be 20 characters. So one centers the other, that is called centering. And there is another thing called right-hand justification. Right-hand justification, anyway, on the left side, everything starts at the one point five point or 10 point, whatever it is. There. And from there, it will also end on the right side at the same margin. So right hand is justified. That is called RHJ, right hand justice. These are all in the computer, but in the uh, uh, proofreading, you have different things. Transpose. If if your transport, transpose mark is there, you have to transfer this word to that place and that word to this place. And if a mark for that is called something like this. It means a curve goes above a word and, and below a word. It means you have to transpose this word there and that, that word here. These are, you know, the parentheses. Parentheses means uh, uh, something like uh, brackets or braces. These are all the marks to indicate the correction. And proofreader marks are, have already been explained also again here. Insert space, example, exemplary, gratia, space evenly were indicated and um, transposing 
and uh, use it to one uh, oblique, one slash is uh, put on the left side of the margin as a marginal uh, mark so that the separate words, hyphenating the words, a hyphen, and then uh, set farther to the left and set farther to the right, set as a ligature, align horizontally, horizontal alignment, then um, paragraph, uh, broken character, Supposing in typefaces, one particular character in a word is broken because of the face, worn out face. And that will give a different uh, meaning. And that tape, typeface has to be replaced with the new one so that it is visible clearly within the word, that particular ca character. Lowercase, uppercase, cap means capitals. All caps means all capitals. And uh, italics, ital means italics. Rome, R-O-M means Roman. You have to put the entire thing in the Roman to the extent of under, to the extent what has been underlined. You know, hyphens, all these things, subscript, subscription, superscription. Uh, subscription means something is written below the word. Superscription means M square. Uh, the two is the superscription. That becomes superscription. Sometimes subscriptions will be there, superscriptions will be there. And if a comma is uh, missing or a full stop is mi mixing, it is indicated on the left side with the uh, universal marks, editorial proofreading marks. Now, after uh, understanding the marginal marks and the textual marks, proofreader marks, let us go to the uh, topic of house styles. Style books, style manuals. What is style book? What is manual? It is a procedure generally adopted, whether it is a size, whether it is a font, whether it is a color, whether it is a format, whether it is a layout, whether it is a size, size of the paper. These are all called, these are all mentioned in the style books. They are called style manuals. Generally, house style means. Uh, the, the generally, uh, uh, a particular magazine, particular journal, particular newspaper, particular publication will have its particular style that is called house style. And if it is specifically told for occasions, then it becomes work style. Also, let us uh, look at uh, soft copy. Now, house style. House style and style guides or style manuals. You know, Manual means a manual in which rules or the instructions are given that is to be followed, a handbook sometimes. There is a police manual manual for Hyderabad City Police. It, it, it contains what the police should do, what are the things they have to perform, which cadre of officer has uh, which power, who, what is the line of uh, control, what is the hierarchy, or how the, the instructions will pass through, or how the feedback will come from below to the top management. All these things, apart from the law books, like uh, they have different law books. Uh, uh, police will have to mainly deal with uh, some uh, penal code, some criminal procedures, some evidences, some motor vehicle things. Apart from all these things, a manual is an instructional work, instructional guide, how they should behave, how they should work, how, what are their duties and what are their responsibilities. Similarly, a house style or a manual or a style book or a handbook will contain all these instructions. They have to be followed for uniformity. Supposing it is not followed, the, the output doesn't look nice. It looks ugly. So how style and style guides are important concepts for a proofreader and copy holder to be familiar with. Yet many people seem to be confused about what they are and what it is and they what they dictate. Simply, as I told you, it is an instructional manual. Everything has been written down. Everything has been explained. There should not be any Confusion. If you have any confusion, search for the keyword or search for the index in the style book, then you'll get to know what it is. A style guide is a set of rules or guidelines 
which dictate the style and formatting of a document or a text. They might be rules for the use of abbreviations or the type of language to be used for punctuations and paragraphing or for structure or for the layout. Essentially, they dictate the overall feeling of the final document by restricting stylistic license to strictly defined rules. Occasionally, a style guide may also determine specific terms and phrases to be used in certain instances, such as, for example, organizations working and writing on behalf of minority groups who may determine politically correct or respectful terms to be used when referring to a particular group of people. Sometimes policy is also there, spelt out. Supposing, for example, whenever the name of God, according to Islam, is taken, def definitely, invariably, there must be PBUH as a respect. Peace be upon him. Supposing we are addressing a governor, governor of a state, definitely there must be His Excellency or Her Excellency. Supposing a minister is there, honorable. For, of course, in the newspapers, of course, in the newspapers, such kind of titles are removed in order to save space. And that is allowed. That is a style book. That is according to the style book. Every time you need not say so and so, so and so, raw, so and so, so and so, ready, so and so, so and so. Uh, uh, so uh, full name need not be given. Once you have said that is Chandra Babu Naidu, every time you need not say Chandra Babu Naidu or Mr. Chandra Babu Naidu or Honorable Chandra Babu Naidu. Once you use it, uh, Honorable Sri Chandra Babu Naidu, the ex uh, chief minister, or Honorable Y.S. Jagan Mohan Reddy, if it is Andhra Pradesh, and Honorable uh, Sri Revant Reddy, chief minister, and or the former chief minister, Kalvakuntla Chandra Shekhar Rao. Just for example, I am telling because of the two states. When once you use, for the first time you use it, and for the second time you may abbreviate, you may shorten it. Once you say the full name, the second time, the two, two words of the name, and every time you can say Rao, Rao said like this, or Naidu said like this, or Jagan Reddy, for Jagan Reddy, later, just Reddy, Reddy said like this, or CM like this, said like this. So these are all for saving the space, for saving the time, if it is print medium or audio medium that is radio or audio visual medium that is uh, uh, television, these words are saved. This time is saved, space is saved because already you have given the description in the beginning and you need not write it uh, repeatedly. So this is also a style. It is given in the style book. The term house style also means the body of conventions followed by a publisher. Conventionally, a publisher follows a style. This is my color I use. Of course, colors everybody uses. This is my masthead. This is my title. This is my size. The, the, how many these columns I use, whether it is tabloid size or a uh, demi size, whatever is the size. If I print a publication, a handout or a brochure or uh, uh, um, folder or a booklet or a A4 size magazine, house journal, whatever it is, if it is written in the manual, supposing a handout ought to be uh, in A8 size, it ought to be in A8 size. It will have a permanent mashed head. Yeah, it means mashed head means the top portion, the heading of the, the publication. It has to be followed. You cannot use the house journal uh, style for a handout or a folder or a brochure. And I think you have already come across what is a handout, what is a folder, what is a brochure. Folder is one particular sheet. It is folded. Maybe one fold or two fold or three folds because it is very handy to hand out. A, 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 uh, a folder is a handout. A brochure is also a handout because you can hand it out very easily. You can uh, you can distribute it is very easy. Brochure is generally brochure is uh, not exceeding 16 pages, either pinned in the center or stitched. A booklet, booklet is maybe uh, a bigger than a, either it is pinned or sectional stitched. And a diary is something different. Diaries will come in different uh, sizes from A8 to A4. Uh, pocket diaries to usual size of A4. And then 
if it is a calendar wall calendars also differ in sizes if the calendar is one sheet calendar if the calendar one you know, several uh, per, per month uh, one page per month with um, bold letters with other details giving uh, the holidays optional holidays so everything is described in this style book of the publisher this is what uh, we should understand some style guides focus on graphic design focusing on such topics as typography and white space how much space to be given at the end margins and uh, website style guides also are, are there they cover publications visuals what should be uh, seen there on the website if it is a blog uh, how it should look like what is the typeface some somebody people some people use arial somebody some people use uh, the times new roman some uh, there are various kinds of typefaces styles and sizes uh, it is to be followed according to the style book in essence it is a manual of instructions that they may be required to correct spelling and the the style work style depend on experience and whether you work in house or freelance they may be uh, the is the style tells you the work uh, the style uh, of manual uh, the guidelines the instructions will tell you uh, all these things now most of the well established printers and publishers follow their house style when their clients give them the freedom to do so or when the clients have no house style of their own to offer then it becomes a work style nevertheless if a client insists on following a particular way of giving exclusive guidelines for the set job the printer will follow them and these guidelines are confined only to the set job and after the job is over if the given work is over then he will revert back to the usual the publisher's style book according to the style book such jobs come under work style which jobs if it is specifically told that it should look like this then it becomes a work style otherwise in a routine manner if a publisher has a style book the printer has to follow the style book this way another job may have a, a new set of guidelines which are followed under the category of the called work style for example an organization follows portrait format portrait means vertical portrait format for all the publications thereby following house styles but when the organization makes a deviation as a special case it brings out a publication in landscape format have you ever come across uh, the landscape format in any publication generally coffee table books albums and the literature related to the realtors real estate they come in horizontal format that is the work style of uh, coffee table books albums and uh, brochures of uh, properties real properties in other cases generally it is a uh, vertical style then let us also look at uh, soft copy corrections what is soft copy soft copy is a copy in digital format you know what is the adobe acrobat that is we call it pdf and generally microsoft word document uh, is called a document word document images or any other digital format all these uh, things will be either in either in a pdf or in the word 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 format images or any other digital format then a hard copy as against soft copy it is a hard copy is a physical copy of your assignment it is a print out it is a build out and whereas soft copy is the file saved in your computer it is only to let you know the difference between hard copy and soft copy isn't it the output obtained in an intangible form on a visual display video unit is called soft copy output the soft copy allows corrections to be made on screen it can be stored after saving and can be sent via email and all these things the soft copy output requires a computer to be read or to be used for making corrections and then carry out corrections and 
there is another procedure called correcting the soft copy using adobe acrobat adobe acrobat software to begin think of the pdf of your computer screen as you would uh, have a uh, printed hard copy you can draw corrections on a pdf page much like you would do on a printed page on a printed page you can do corrections as we have already discussed on the left side marginal uh, uh, corrections marks are made proofreading marks are made and in the text textual within the text textual marks are made similarly like the hard copy corrections on the soft copy corrections can also be made using adobe acrobat software you can draw corrections on a pdf page yes just like you draw on the printed page and what are the what are the tools you have one is using the pencil tool or other drawing rules you have on the top or on the bottom of the page you can select them and use them so usually there will be a pencil it is a tool of correction for basic proofreaders marks you can use that pencil and the text box tool for more complex text additions text box tool is also there you can create a text box and then write instructions there and you should not use the note tool and the text box tool to make your comments and note tool or the text box tool to make corrections comments if, uh, while the pencil is being used although these tools appear to be user friendly the marks and comments made with them can be hard for a production editor or typesetter to see the to see and interpret them so in adobe acrobat software you select the a tool called a pencil tool and make corrections just as you correct on the hard copy and then while using the pencil it allows you to handwrite your comments or make other notes on the page either in the text or in the margin you can do this with either a stylus or a tablet or a standard mouse even with the mouse you can do it with if you have a mouse and if you have a stylus and your surface of the computer is sensitive and stylus friendly it is compatible then you can draw make corrections on the text itself and then save it in either case please be aware that learning to make corrections electronically it takes a bit of patience and practice also it needs some practice otherwise if you uh, draw some corrections if you make some corrections and if you don't save them at the end of the page then it, it, there is every likelihood that the entire thing gets corrected and you will be able to see only the original thing what you have been, what has been given to you when you use the pencil tool i mean pencil tool to mark changes within the text please be sure to make a corresponding proofreader marks in the margin so that is usual if you don't if you write only make corrections in the text and if you forget to mark some proofreading mark in the margin then the purpose purpose gets defeated to erase markings made with the pencil tool there is another tool called pencil eraser tool don't worry need not worry about uh, when once it is written it becomes indelible nothing is indelible as far as uh, software is concerned if you mark some digital some uh, proofreading marks in the text and in the margin in order to uh, erase it there is another uh, tool called pencil eraser tool or select the you can select that and use it using the text box tool allows you to put changes using your keyboard anywhere on a pdf page to create the text box and begin typing and uh, if you are not well versed with that it it becomes very difficult for you and there is another tool called drawing mark markup tools which include rs rectangles lines and more allows it allows you to easily create straight lines or other shapes on the page when you use one of the drawing markup tool to mark a change within the text you have to ensure to make a corresponding proofreader marks so this is general whether you whatever tool you use you just use them as you use them on hard copy 
another tool is there that is called highlighting tool highlighting tool will give you colors if you select the highlighting tool and if you want to highlight each thing either you make it a highlight or you can underline the entire line or you can uh, uh, draw a line across the line saying that this entire line is to be deleted but correspondingly you have to give instructions in the on the left side of the thing then if you wish to change the properties or appearance of any of the marks you have made on a page right click the mark itself and go to the properties which will open up a new window that allows you to change the color or text type so if you are not sure whether you as a while proofreading if you are if your thing gets right or wrong if you if you are in doubt then keep the original thing as it is make your copy take it to the uh, correction tools use the entire thing there and then save it also as a, as a um, corrected copy so that the original copy that you have, that has been given to you is safe and whatever corrections you have made as a proofreader it will also be there so that it becomes very sometimes by mistake you can you are uh, you are uh, you are liable to delete some portion a line or word in the original one in order to avoid this confusion better to make out a copy digitally on your system or whatever is the device you have in front of you for making corrections then you can do it all said and done reading the hard copy is the most preferred choice of the publishers proofreaders and editors in a way they are rather comfortable in carrying out the corrections directly on the screen rather than using all kinds of electronic tools to mark corrections in the margins and the text now importance of the proofreading in publications you have you have dealt with the copy holder proofreader proofreading marks and correcting them on um, online and the how to use various tools for corrections now what is the importance of proofreading in publication as we already discussed it it serves many purposes it corrects the the it corrects everything after the photo photo type sets has been done not just newspapers and publishing houses but many organizations like local councils business houses charities they are all engaged in publishing activity because they publish on their own you are a pr man and your organization wanted to produce something and some editor is there if you are not the editor editor will be there if you are a proofreader you have to do the proofreader if you are the edit pro himself and you are the editor of a uh, you are the editor of the particular publication then you are supposed to get to know get acquainted with all these proofreading techniques if their staffs have no editorial expertise they cannot specify what they need or exactly what they want the text may be a team effort so no one has looked at the whole such claims need and expect more than proofreading but do not yet realize what a difference a copy editor can make however they may need the help of the proofreading this is the importance the proofreader uses care judgment skill knowledge and experience in checking that the work of author or the editor or the designer or the photo typesetter or the typesetter is satisfactory marking amendments and advising the client of the problems all with the aim of optimizing the result the 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 result must be very uh, exact and as desired by the publisher and professional proofreaders will always compare the proofs to the edited copy line by line by line or read it blind and he will check page numbers and page headings we are summing up check the table of contents against chapter titles page numbers and end matters appendices index etc ensure consistent styles of spelling and hyphenation particularly by following a style guide if supplied or compiling their own watch out for omissions i mean proofreader will watch out for omissions and inconsistencies in typography layout and also the content identify necessary changes and mark the proof check or insert cross references wherever possible and feasible eliminate uh, inelegant or confusing word column and page numbers 
including widows and orphans, shortlist and first lines. What is a widow? Widow, widow is the last word, last word of the page on the extreme right on the last line. Whereas orphan is the first word on the page on the top left. So these words are called widow word and orphan pages because widow is abandoned, orphan is parentless. So such words will have to be taken care. If they are left like that, the meaning gets lost. Therefore, if a word has to be split as a widow or an orphan, they have to be taken care of, care of so that they are not left at that place. A widow has to be brought to the next page or or orphan will have to be brought uh, will have to be taken back to the uh, previous page so all these things will have to be taken care ensure that illustrations captions and labels correspond with each other check that content looks right and is logically arranged lies with the authors the proofreader will have to make licensing with the author and the editor to resolve if there are any queries and collate the author's changes with others. If the author changes something more, even after the reading or during brief reading, they have to be carried out. Part of the job is light editing within tight times. So the job of the proofreader is light editing within tight limits, but professional proofreaders do not re-edit the material. They intervene only with good reason. All individuals and organizations that are engaged in publishing, they need the services of the proofreaders uh, to present their material in a flawless form. Uh, now, soft proofs and digital proofs and uh, press proofs. Soft proofs is, is the proof uh, while it is on the desktop for the publishing systems. And digital proof is for the colors. And for the press proofs is the uh, when a printout is taken and th there are procedures for all these uh, soft proof, digital proofs, and press proofs. And now, let us look, uh, uh, let us uh, summarize uh, uh, what proofreading is. Proofreading is necessary for all publications, isn't it? You have to agree. If the art of, det it, is, it, is, it is the art of detecting the mistakes on proofs before publication and indicating desired uh, Corrections. Proofreaders look for misspelled words, errors of grammar, poor spacing, faulty pointing, uh, uh, wrong dates for commonly known uh, important events, the average person reading for information or, or for pleasure reads whole words or a series of them, not the separate letters of each word. Therefore, hyphenating the words or removing the hyphens removing the spaces or closing them up, they have to be removed. It, it, a proofreader will ensure that the reading becomes a, a pleasure. And now, the, now looking at the house style and uh, work style, the, they are called manuals and the proofreader will have to follow the manual, whatever is the style given to him, then it is for the it is expecting the best output in the printing. A style guide is a set of rules or guidelines and which dictate the style and formatting of a document or text. Work styles depending on, on experience and whether you work in-house or you have freelance. Soft copy is a copy of digital format. The output obtained in an intangible form on a visual display, audio unit or video unit is called soft copy output. Now, there are certain words. Every profession will have a specific terminology. Now, as far as this particular lesson is called, here is a glossary. Homonyms, as I told you, homonyms are the similar words. They are called homophones, the words of similar consonantal structure. Consonants will be the same. Vowels may differ, just like obsolete and absolute. Typography is an art of procedure of arranging type or processing the data and printing from it. Then typo means generally an error, typographical error, we call it typo. What is galley proof? Galley means a, an iron frame. If a proof is clipped to a galley, it, then it is called a galley proof. Then page proof, the proofs of individual pages is called page proofs. 
foundry proof if electro type of or stereotype plates are made from the type matter it is looked up and a proof pulled on coated stock copy holder as i told you copy holder is the person who assists the proof reader and reads the copy loudly in a, 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 at a, at a uniform space proof reader marks are the marks are the symbols marked on your copy to point out the corrections made soft proof is an electronic file used for proofing digital proof means a sample of printed output on a computer printer and press proof is the test print made at the printing press to provide the last chance for making adjustments before printing so this is all about proof reading this is lesson number 10 in semester 5 under the subject corporate publications corporate publications are the publications edited produced and distributed by the corporates is it is it correct to use corporate publication for government organizations yes it is a common term whether it is a government organization government department public sector private sector uh, whether it is a media house publishing something or in a major industrial establishment or a corporate hospital or a corporate college or an ngo whichever is the organization if it produces something for disseminating to the public then it is called corporate publication editing and production of corporate publications is the job of the public relations officer or public relations manager or corporate uh, communications manager or corporate publications manager whatever is the designation and proof reading is one of the important tasks in the process of editing and production of corporate publications thank you very much for listening thanks to the university thank you very much good day